Well, everybody, welcome to Waiting to Win again. It's good to have you all with us on our show and trust that uh, everything's been good with everybody who's watching. Well, hello to Daryl and to Darren. Um, I'll, Daryl, yeah, and Joe agree. I, I, it's the cold front somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from, but it hit us hard. So we're feeling a bit of the chill, yeah, and Joe. Yeah, let's hope it's the last spell, uh, Clyde, because um, I'm not enjoying it at all. Part of the winter now, Darren. And you guys in the Cape had a bit of rain this week. How's the weather now? We had a bit of rain, but it has started to clear up. Um, the penetrometer is still sitting at 30. It might drop to around 29, 28, hopefully tomorrow morning. Yeah, you're going to have. Is the wind pumping there, or is it okay? Um, it's on and off. All right. Well, we'll, we'll obviously follow closely. We're going to do Kenilworth Saturday the 14th of August and Sunday, Turfentine, the 15th of August. So we are doing a double preview and um, we'll obviously give that information to you right now. So let's get straight into it, guys, and uh, just have a look, if I may. We'll start with the Kenilworth meet um, and go into that very quickly, uh, which does simply show that um, as far as Kenilworth is concerned, um, there's scratchings, race four, number six, race five, number seven, and race eight, number two, this being recorded on Friday evening. So take that into account once you have a look at the show. And then Darren, you said that Aldo de Mayo is not riding, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, I did see a couple of jockey changes, so um, we'll get to that just now. All right, excellent. Um, you'll give us that information as it comes our way. There's a headwind that shows of about 20 to 25 Ks at Kenilworth on the winter track. In the last days you've had, four, seven days you've had about 40 mils of rain. Um, naturally, there would have been no irrigation with a pen of approximately 30, as Darren alluded to, with a softer track. We're on the winter course, and there's a spur when they turn for home of around two meters at the 470 meter mark. All right, well, let's get straight into the pick six. And let me start with you, Darren, Cape Town being your home. What does this card look like overall for the punters? I mean, can, can we get excited about it? Is there money to be made? How do you, how do you see it? Uh, yes, there is money to be made on this card. Uh, there are a couple of standouts, some nice early punts as well. And hopefully we can uh, catch this pick six as well. Uh, we haven't played narrow. We've, we've played quite wide in the pick six. We're looking for a result or two. Um, starting in race three, um, my first two picks are the two favorites in the race. Aeneas, lovely run last time behind Van Hunt. Only beaten a length and a half. That was a juvenile plate. And I think he'll take some beating in this lineup. Uh, his debut run was second behind Keep It Secret, who came out to win again. There's been three direct winners from that form line as well. And then Senso Unico, good debut run in a juvenile plate over 1,200 meters. And bred for further, he'll enjoy the step up to 14 from a good draw. Um, the dangers are going to come from Full House, Debonair, and Tour of Fate. But we've chosen to go the top two in the betting, and hopefully we, that can see us through the pick six. Yeah, you, you never really know, I guess, with younger horses, and you know they haven't had that many runs or opportunities, etc. So I can understand why you're concerned about those three. But you guys are deciding. In terms of Aeneas, have we? Did you mention a replacement rider yet? Or, uh, Oswald Noach has, uh, I think, uh, picked up the ride on Aeneas. Okay, <laughs> we'll check that. Okay, so. Um, and a, a Candace Bass Robinson, that stable's been in pretty good form, Daryl, if I come to you for a moment as well. I mean, it wasn't long ago when I think they had as many as five winners in Port Elizabeth. Yeah, they're in good form. Um, the horse, Unias, putting, has put up two solid runs to date. I actually don't think the race was run to suit him last time. I, they went a little bit slow for him. Um, I would have liked to see him over a mile, but I like the fact that um, this thing's out the ground, so it's going to make the 1400 that more, much more testing. So a healthy respect for Unias. Uh, there's not much between him and Debonair on a line through Sundays, but Debonair doesn't bring the most inspiring form into the race, whereas Unias, I believe, is better than his last start. So I'm leaning towards him over Debonair. But I've, I've make a Senso Unico my first pick. Now, if you watch his replay, he came out there, he came out the pens slow on that occasion. But he got into stride quite quickly, and then he just grinded the whole way up the straight. I like the fact that now he's going around the bend. If he's lost, lost around the bend, if he need, and if he need, his inexperience doesn't catch him out of here, I think he may well topple the top one in the betting of here. But I do believe it is at two or three. 
Yeah, Vaughan Marshall, but it's quite a strong card. I actually should have phoned Vaughan and asked him. You, have, you haven't spoken to Vaughan Marshall by any chance, Daryl, no? No, not at all. Yeah, we should have called him. But anyway, okay, so it's those two um, that we like in the opening leg of the pick six, which takes us on to the fourth race on the card, which is the Cape Racing Maiden Plate, and it's run over the mile, and it shows that Sage King is top of the boards, currently at 17 to 10. And um, Daryl, I'll stay with you. The form line in particular... Um, if you have a look at the Star Master form line, is extremely solid. I mean, reflecting for those who don't naturally go into the in-depth form to find out who the winners are, if I memory serves me correctly, Universal, the Vardy family, came out with that form line to win as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder, is, is 17 to 10 not a good price? My, my only concern is, is inexperience around the bend of year because... Uh... You know, you never know how they're going to handle it. But I believe he's just opening the book. One would say, okay, that's a moderate debut. Beats on six in that Port Salens, uh fifth. But he's agreed much better than what it appears on paper because have of the had, form line. The strength of the form line the, is very, very strong. Sorry to interject. Have you had a look at that pedigree? The, his pedigree? Yes. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's by dynasty out of a Badgerland mare. Uh, the mare went up to a mile. He's going to love the step up in trip. There's absolutely no doubt. Just it comes as his second run. So there's other horses with more racing experience, more streetwise. But on form and on the form lines, I'm making the best bets on the card. Oh, do you? Okay. Sage King, that's excellent. So we've got the tick from you. Uh, Darren, I'm hoping we can get the confidence from you too. Yes, he is a confident selection. You know, that that fifth behind Star Master, we saw Van Hunks come out of there and win a juvenile plate. We saw Universal come out of there, win by nine and a half lengths, and another winner out of the form line as well from a handful of runners. Uh, he's going to love the step up in trip. Um, yeah, uh, if inexperienced, uh, we've chosen to go four horses in the pick six only because he's having a second start. So we're not stopping the punters to have a punt on him, but we're going to play safe in the pick six. We back him up with Hereditary, who had a wind up off before his last start. Um, um, and his comeback run over a sprint was encouraging, and he's bred for this type of trip and further. Uh, he's a dynasty out of Cupid, which makes him a half-brother to Vardy and Universal, and he's not a bad horse. We haven't seen the best of him, and I think we'll see a much better run from Hereditary. Picketburg Alley, good run with the blinkers on last time. He's going in, and Sky God, consistent form, will be thereabouts. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that you've picked up on Hereditary and that you've done your homework there. So thank you for that, uh, uh, finding out about what happened with him um, in relation to Adam Marcus's runner, that he had the wind up, etc. cetera. Um, I wonder, however, if he's just not taking on what does seem to what may well be a very good horse in this horse here. But okay, I understand that why you're backing up in the pick six due to inexperience. But as you as you refer as you mentioned, perhaps we should have a bit of a strike on this horse, uh, Sage King. All right, let's go to race number five, uh, Darren, and I'll stay with you and uh, have a look at this. This is a handicap at the 80 level, where um, number five, you know, who is currently top of the boards. Um, currently trading at uh, two to one. On form, he looks hard to beat. Uh, yes, for sure. He does look the horse to beat. Very good first run out the Maidens. He's a lovely big chestnut with a big action. And um, um, I do make his immediate danger his stable companion. So I'm going with the three-year-olds here, uh, narrowly over the older horses. Knight Ruler ran third in the Langemann as a Maiden. And then he followed it up with a very good win over the 1,400-meter trip. Uh, very close between them. I can't really split the two of them. Uh, for third, Ben Su Bay Suye. Uh, very good, consistent form out of the Maidens. And that makes him a runner here. And Dollar Brand, who does his best work late, uh, he should be thereabouts. Okay. So those are the two. And I guess with the Justin Snade stable, Grand for Nickak, Richard Faree, in terms of stably elect jockeys, I mean, they both get the e equal opportunity, don't they? The, 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 if, I, if I can ask Daryl, um, come to you, Daryl, and bring you in, because Richard's staying with, well, he's riding Knight Ruler and, and uh, Grant riding you-know-who, whereas Richard had ridden you-know-who before, and I don't know what the outcome would have been, you know, what the decision is. 
that he's now on 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 night ruler. Yeah, he rode night ruler to victory last time. Now I'm very impressed with this with the pro, with the progress he's been making. Um, I believe he actually won with a, a ton in hand last time out. And the further they were going, the better he was getting, the stronger is he was finishing his race off. So he's gonna love the step up in trip. Now in the previous race, we heard of a relation to body. He's a half brother to Jack Dark. So he's spreading the purple. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll certainly give him a winning claims of year. But I've got respect for you know who, like Darren Sachon, he's a lovely big son of Water Winter. I think he benefits it from the gelding. I don't think that slow pace suits him last night. We just have to watch that form like Unas in the previous uh, race, I think it is, or the third race. Yeah, the yeah. third race, see how that goes. But you know, his he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, dam um, is bar out of uh, Giants Causeway. So I'm certain he's gonna get the mile, if not further. So those are the two to focus on. I think the two up and coming three-year-olds They've got more scope for the others uh, who may well be in their in their place at this stage of their careers because they're not they're not exactly shining they're just running on honest decent races whereas the two up and coming three yards could be ahead of the handicapper okay so we'll go those two the four and the five um as far as we get through the pick six halfway through anyway which takes us to a, ha a handicap now for fillies and mares don't like the race at all over a thousand meters uh, Daryl, is there any value in here in this? What can we do here? I believe, uh, Clyde, well, we know there's a lot of Chillum's delight form. Um, as they flashed past the winning line last time out, less than a length, covered the first four. I'm always skeptical when it comes to such close finishes. So for that reason, I mean, if you like uh, Chillum's delight, you have to give respect for Jillian's, uh, Jillian Anne, Chili Winter, and Noosa Princess. And for that reason only, I'm leaning towards another form line. And I've come up with number two on Captain's side as the, the horse to beat over here. You just have to go back to that Brianna form line where she actually beats Oh What a Night and she's two kilograms better off. She always gives an honest performance. She runs her best. And I think. Uh, I think this race is tailor-made for her to come up trumps of the art. She's going to be my first pick in a okay. very open race. Yeah, I'm open race. Interesting. On Captain's side, uh, Darren, the five-year-old, she's now a five-year-old mare. And that she's got the services of Richard Faree, Darren, is certainly going to help her. Well, that's actually my first choice in the race as well. Uh, the only problem with her, she plays up badly in the stalls and at the start and she dwarfs and sometimes loses even up to three, four lengths at the start. So she's, she goes in last, she loads, and they have to open those gates straight away, otherwise she's gonna lose ground at the start. So she's not one to trust, we have to back her up. Horses like Jillian Ann, I think she'll run a cracker, very good last run, she's in form. And a dark horse in the race is Jewel of Doha, number five on the card. The last time she ran over a thousand meters, she beat Santa Maria. Uh, three direct winners from that form line. Her last two starts have been over the 1200. She drops back to a thousand and she is the only three year old in the race with 54 kilos. I think she's got a chance. Okay. But generally speaking, a difficult race, right? Yes. Okay. Let's take us to the seventh race, Darren. I'll say with you, um, goals and gallops handicap. Talking about goals, it's the start of the English Premier League. Uh, it's already started, I think, as we speak uh, this evening. And uh, you want to make 20% of your money on a Chelsea or something at one to five, but that doesn't interest us at all. But Salvatore Mundi probably does, Darren, at 22 to 10. Yes, this is a very good horse. I don't think we've seen the best of him. He's shown a lot of ability and he's a dynasty out of secret obsession. I think he's looking for the for the 1950 meter trip that he gets. It is his second run back, but I think he would have tightened up last time out of a 14 that didn't go fast pace and he got caught flat footed. I think he's a big runner and one of the better bets on the card. We have backed him up in the pick six with Dubai lights um, on his best form. You know, he, he ran in the derby. He ran in the politician behind comedy. Dunn. He's got a lot of ability, this horse. Um, I think in future, he could be looking for even further being out of Dubai, Gina. But he, he, 
he is the next best in the race and he has got a touch of class. Okay, interesting. So those are, the, and that's at six to one. So those two that you found there, uh, let me bring Daryl in and just uh, quickly question him on whether or not it goes beyond Salvatore and Dubai. Not for me, Clyde. Those two suffice for the app, in my opinion. Um, I'm actually going to be leaning to Dubai Lights over Salvatore Mundi. You know, Salvatore Mundi is a full brother to Bunker Hunt, who, who contested the July. He's top class over 10 furlongs. So Salvatore Mundi is going to love this step up in trip. My only concern last time was he was doing it a little bit hard in his race. And uh, he's now having his second run off the rest. He's going to strip much fitter. But I think he may well... Um, he may well find himself pulling last time because he was above himself, returning from a rest. So as long as he settles in running, he's going to be a big, big contender. Dubai Lights, now have a look at his form. He's back in a handicap. Just go back to his penultimate start, which was in a handicap. And we saw winners from my form line in Rocking Ring, Ringo and All About Al. And off his current mark, he's going to be very, very competitive. My only concern is Salvatore Mundi. Will he settle? That's the reason why I'm leaning towards the Dubai Lights. But I, the only danger for me is the favourites. So, are you saying between you guys, are you saying there's some value at six to one in the source Dubai Lights? I don't think uh, it can hurt you at all if you get if you take some six to one now. I th you can actually touch the two. Uh, you can back them both in the race and show profits. Okay. Well, that takes us, Daryl. Let me stay with you, Daryl, to the last uh, leg of the pick six, right, which is the um, a maiden plate fillies and mares. And just a reminder, the next Kenilworth meeting is on the 18th of August. And Versailles is 72 the field, um, 72 the vet, 72 the field, and Tinga 4 to 1, Sweet Repeat number 12, 4 to 1. Uh, and then you'll, you can get 9 to 2, 5 to 1 and better about the others. So... I mean, we've been talking about Vaughan Marshall's horses. I like this horse number one, Our World, at, at seven to one. Um, she, yes, uh, four-year-old, but she's, she's been there or thereabouts and been fairly consistent. You know, I, she's the type of horse that could show up here. Yeah, she could show up, but she's exposed hard. Um, she may well win a race, uh, if that's in, in the province. Um, not going to Hollywood. She's had her chances. She's disappointed when fancied in the past. So for that reason, I'm looking for some unexposed horses with a reason behind that thought process. And I've found number eight, field of vision. Now, I know you'll look at her form and say, wow, that's very moderate. And I agree with you. She's put in two moderate runs, but over a distance that could have been way short of her best. You just have to look who she's related to. She's... Uh, she's related to Princess Irene. She's related to Sir Michael. They're well above average. Now, now that she's stepping up in trip, she's going the extra distance, which is going to suit her. I'm expecting major, major improvements. I think she could be the upset material in the race. I just hope that she does have some sort of ability and, uh, and, and is effective over this trip. Another one that falls into that category is number seven, Ducey Doe or do see do, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Yeah. Now she's also had two runs out of the straights and she's a daughter by Ideal World. So now that she's going, she's been stepped up in trip, you can expect further improvement from her. And the favorite Versailles, now she's a lovely big daughter of Versailles I'm just skeptical about that last form line because there was a favorite that ran second. Well, the horse that ran second came out as favorite in her next lot and flopped. So I'm worried about their form line. I'm leaning towards some improvers in the race. Field of vision, my first pick of a do see do. Okay, so interesting. Eight and seven, seven and eight. Nice double floaters there in the last, if you're looking for some money. Um, well, let's ask Darren. D Darren, your, your take on the final leg of the pick six or quartets at Kenilworth? There's a, there's a lot of unexposed form here. <clears throat> Horses with only two starts trying the trip for the first time. Um, I'm leaning towards Ducey Du. Um, her debut, she was flying up behind Veronic. And um, her next start over 1,200 in a juvenile plate, she didn't find much of a finish. But I think she was looking for the mile, and that could have caught her out. So Ducey Du, if she can overcome the draw and into a good position, she'll be doing her best work, being by ideal world. Um, she'll definitely appreciate this trip. Uh, sweet repeat. Out of Sweet Virginia, twice over. 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, that could be a relation to do it again. Um, and Ntinga, Dynasty out of Viva Maria, I think she's looking for even 2,000 meters. Uh, field of Vision will step, uh, will appreciate the step up to a mile, and I think she'll show a big improvement. The favorite, Versailles, um, her form lines haven't stood up too strong, so um, I'm not too sure she'll start favorite race time. And then you were touching on that also, Our World, uh, she's had chances, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, Coup de Gras as a stallion, not for me. Uh, he reminds me of a stallion called My Earl from 1980s or 90s. My dad took his champion mare um, called Ollie's Last to My Earl, and the foal ran unplaced in six starts and then went to other size and threw Alpha Omega and Final Clan. So, yeah, not for me, Our World. Um, I'm leaning towards Do See Do as the value in the race. Okay, well, whatever happens, you know, the connections to Coup de Gras are never going to sponsor the show, right? You know <laughs> <laughs> we worked that part out. I think, I think he got the best mares his first season. They went for a lot of money, so yeah. Fair enough. Okay, but I mean, listen, at the end of the day, uh, you, you tell it as it is, and that's what we want. All right, so that's an interesting wrap-up of the, of the final leg of the pick six, which takes us to the pick six, and we're spending 400 rand to get 10%. And um, that's pretty much uh, the take on it. In the first leg, the guys are going two legs, sorry, two horses, five and eight, um, by the, the, the one, five, seven, nine. And, and there again, with, with reference to what you guys may want to, as the viewers want to do in that particular event, um, no one's stopping you from uh, having a bit of a strike. It's up to you, uh, but we'll leave that in, entirely in your hands. In the next leg, they've gone two, three, four, five, and I'm, I was referring to, of course, to Sage King. Uh, field at the back, I mean, in, uh, in that particular leg, the sixth race, two and three in the penultimate, and then we've loaded at the back to play it safe. All right, Darren, uh, talk about the second race, because there's an interesting one. Yeah, this is, he's a lovely grey. Uh, he's a William Longsword out of, uh, is it Secret of Victoria? Beautiful pedigree. Um, he lost ground at, at the start, first time out. But, I mean, he must have been a dozen lengths off the leader going through the 600. And he absolutely flew the final 300 meters. He took off through runners. Another 50 meters he gets up to win. And he'll appreciate the step up in trip. Uh, I know that form line hasn't stood up, but I'm not too worried about that. I think we're going to see a very good... I'm excited to see the source Voldemort in action tomorrow. Uh, Salvador Mundi, like Daryl said, if he settles while in running... He should appreciate the step up and trip. Okay, Voldemort, we'll wait for him tomorrow. Daryl. Yeah, uh, Clyde, I'm going, if you have a look at that, it's uh, the Brett Crawford and Greg Sheen show for me. Sage yes. King, I love the fact that he's stepping up in trip. I think we'll see the best of him now and going into the future. He could be one to follow. And then I'm just hoping for improvement in the last from field of vision. I think it's a, it's a fairly... Wide open race, not too much. Uh, the form that's exposed isn't strong at all. So I'm just hoping she's got some, some ability about her and she could sneak up and run into the money. I'd go the one, 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 and one place in K time. Place. Okay, that's, uh, that's the, the Kenilworth play. Um, the weighted to win double between. Daryl and Darren, if you go Voldemort into Sage King, not a, that's such a nice price, 11 to do the stretch. That could be the way to, to play it for confirmation purposes. I also looked at it. I thought Sage King very hard to beat. I like that. Uh, I think 17 to 10 is a decent price. So, so there we go. So that's Kenilworth, and that takes care of the first. Race. And that's what we've got up on screen for our guys now. We can take the viewers through the pick six and why we've decided to do um, what we've done here in this particular event. Um, we, we, we're going five runners here. One, two, three, four, five in this, in this maiden plate. I'm very happy to see that Keegan DeMello is uh, on the high felt. Um, do you think he watches our show? Because we mentioned it the last time we spoke to Lyle. Oh, he, he, he could. He could. You never know. Um, yeah, very talented job. Um, Clyde, let me just put it to you this way. I don't like this race at all. That's the reason why we've gone five runners. I think it's very moderate form. Um, they, 
they've each got negatives about them. So I'm not willing to stick my neck out and say, and, and uh, comment on this race. I just think throw all five in and be, be sure to get through. Okay, that's all of them. One, two, three, four, five. Darren, you, you see it the same way. I mean, I, su I suppose that Admiral Dooley and, and um, my master, those two would ultimately dominate the market, I would imagine, uh, from a betting perspective. Well, the betting's pretty close together. I think it's seven to two the field, but the three-year-olds I do favor, Admiral Dooley and Flinders Range, not much separating them on the winter with Joe uh, form. I think a short head separating them and both should enjoy the mile. And my master also has a nice form line or two. So I favor the three, four, and five over the one and two, but we're throwing them all in. Okay, that's, uh, that's the first leg of the pick six. The second leg of the pick six takes us to a maiden plate over the mile. It's the teletrack.com. And um, again, I see you guys are going with the, with the, with the four runners here. Indigo Winters, uh, you know, on her only run to date, very good, well, when I say very good, decent run, she got beat four lengths, finishing in third position. There should be natural improvement, Darren, to come from a horse like, uh, like in Indigo Winter here. Yes, especially with St. John Grey horses. If they run well first time out, they usually build on that effort. Um, she is a water winter out of Go Indigo. I think Go Indigo got up to 1,800 meters. So the mile... Could be a question mark. She did run third out of seven over 1,200 meters. Uh, she must go in Fort Snow of the older horses. She holds Willow Lane on that last start by a couple of lengths. And then I've thrown in Thunder Shower. Uh, she ran in a juvenile plate behind Look Yourself, six lengths off. And I think she can show more improvement from that. But no outright first selection. We're going the four horses in the pick six. Yeah, so, so, so Daryl, let me just ask you, I mean, I um, you know, speaking about Keegan Demello, he's got a ride now here for Stuart Pettigrew, and it was like, nice move. She, I, I see we haven't got her in. Should we, should... No, she's she scratched. Uh, we had her in, she's but she's scratched. Uh, she's taken yeah. out, but that's right. That's correct. She's out, correct. So that's quite, thank you for that. Clyde, you've so, got, yeah. you've got a, fairly, uh, obviously you've got an unexposed three-year-old of year, uh, encouraging debut, but did she show enough on debut to to take on some hard knocking uh, older horses over here and be confident that she's going to put the race to bed? I don't think so. Although she could come on lens with that, like Darren touched on her breeding, I don't think the distance is going to be a problem. But you know that you've got Willow Lane, you've got Willow Lane is going to show early pace. I don't think there's much pace in the race. And you know, Lyle Hewitson, if he's up front and he's able to dictate, He's going to time the race to perfection. And I wouldn't be shocked to see a reverse that form with Fort Snow. They're both moderates. So it just depends on luck in running. I, I think it's between the Willow Lane, Fort Snow, and Indigo Winter. Obviously, Indigo Winter's got the most scope for improvement. But has this race come? Um, or will, it, will it inexperience find her out? We'll only find out on Sunday. All right, well, let's move on to race number five then, which is um, a handicap at uh, the players' soccer 6, 10, and 13. It's a handicap at the 66 level. So um, when, you, when you take that into account, it's, th th these are your E division type horses. And I suppose uh, looking at the form, um, you go to a horse like uh, My Kingdom, who, who, who Daryl's been fairly consistent. If you're on current form, in those last four runs or so, he hasn't been out of the money. Yeah, it's like... We have to be honest with ourselves, Xavier. He's in good form. But you, he's a six-year-old. He hasn't won in a year. You don't want to re really have the rent money on, do you? Um, so he's, he's no doubt the horse to beat, but he's certainly far from a banker. Um, he does hold Grimaldi on form. Grimaldi's a younger horse, more, probably got more scope for improvement, but he holds him comfortably. And he holds Hey Benny. Now, I'm willing to excuse Hey Benny's last run, because I watched that replay, I thought he got interfered with at the start, and he probably found himself in a position further back than he wants it to be. So I'm hoping that he can just hold his position from a good draw and race a little bit handier to the pace, and I won't be shocked to see him reverse that form. So health respect for Hey Benny, my kingdom, and the other one I found in the race is number two, Light With Art. Now he's never far off, and he's now, his ratings come down to a mark where he's 
obviously competitive. So I respect his chances, but it's a very, very open race, and we've got a few yeah to hopefully progress into the fourth leg. Hopefully we can survive it too. I mean, it was like Will of the Wisp, uh, Darren, has, has uh, got to have a chance. We've put him in as well. Uh, yes, we're not taking any chances here. I'll stick with my kingdom as my first choice. I mean, he holds Grimaldi by three and three quarter lengths or three and a half lengths and only a half kilo swing in the weight. He is a six-year-old one-time winner, but his next win looks to be around the corner. He's got a good enough draw, and I think he'll be right there at the finish. The maiden in the race, Jumara Gold, um, he, I mean, he ran a length and a half off Hey Benny in a maiden handicap a while back. Um, on his best form, I think he can be very competitive in a low 66 handicap race from a good draw. Uh, well, as a wisp, he's been running on very late in his races over a mile and 1,500. So the 1,800 meter trip could be what he's looking for, but it's hard to say being out of black, uh, black Manalush out of vague. So we've thrown them in. We've thrown Grimaldi in. He's probably, a, well, he's a very disappointing horse. They did rate him highly early on. He hasn't gone through with it. And then Light Without has dropped in the ratings and he hasn't been far back. Mm. So, I mean, what much more can one really say about an E-division, if you want to call it that, uh, as we have now figured out that we have to put horses and we have. And that takes us to the next event on the card, which is race number six. And the, uh, the idea of this is a handicap, fillies and mares, tough. But I see we've only gone the two runners. I would imagine a horse like I mean, in, in the market, Western Dance after her last start, she's got to be right up there too. But that Senescence is back. I mean, she was there last weekend. Yes. He gave her a um, chance. Senescence. Of fancies, yeah. Yes, I, I believe the 1800 meter trip is perfect for Senescence. And off her current rating, her last start over a mile, uh, she tucked in towards the back from the wide draw and she ran on strongly late, two and a half lengths off the winner. I think back to the 18, um, there's a form line behind last year. Now, Western Dance was in the race, Senescence and Fascinada. Western Dance has gone up seven kilos, Senescence two kilos, and Fascinada. Um, in other words, Fascinada is seven kilos better off with Western Dance and two kilos better off with Senescence, which brings her right into the race. Her current rating uh, from 68 back then down to 60, and she's unbeaten over course and distance. So the, the value in the race, the outsider we've thrown in the pick six is Fascinata at 14 to 1. But my value bet on the card is Senescence. I think Lyle, he's going to ride a good race on her from a one draw, give her every chance, and I'll make her the horse to beat. Yeah. I, I, Daryl, we recall the conversation with uh, Lyle about Senescence when he said, perhaps wait, was this the horse, wait for the reins and you'll get your money back? Yeah. <laughs> That's all, man. Good. I giggled to myself because if Lyle does happen to watch this episode, he's probably pulling his hair out at home and saying, boys, I told you, I told you. Yeah, yeah. But Lyle, give us, give her one last chance. <laughs> um, yeah, Clark, you know, I studied this race and I thought Senescence is the one to beat and I made the dangers, Western Dance and Mary Posa. I saw it differently to Darren, but you know what, Mary Posa, in my opinion, the negative for her is that last form line. I know she's improving with racing, but I've got my doubts of that strength of the form line because there have been three runners and all three have finished unplaced. So that's the reason why I put it in line through her chances. And then Western Dance, you know, Lyle rode an absolute pearler last time I see. Slowed them down. He got a break at the top of the straights and she kicked at the finish. It was just textbook stuff. And you know that she went up five pounds I mean, she went up six pounds for that victory. So she's now carrying three kilograms better, uh, three kilograms more over a distance short of her best. So for me, that's a negative. So I'm, I'm favoring senescence in a strong way over here. I like the fact that she now comes out from store gate number one and Lau can just position her wherever he feels is best because she may well find herself closer to the pace than usual. And for me, that could be the telling factor. I don't see much pace in the race. So if she is able to go a little bit handier with a slow run race, we know that she's got a turn of foot. This race could be, could be tailor-made for her. And I think she is the one to beat. 
But we backed up with Darren's second pick, Fascinata, because of the weight turnaround. So we're happy to go two horses in this leg. Okay, and if, if punters take into account the positives of what you've referred to in terms of the one and the two, well, if they want to add it in, it'll basically work out to then, what, a 5% uh, calculation of the pick six total cost. The seventh race on the card um, is a handicap, fillies and mares, computer form 1,100 metres. Um, the pick six showing that your boys are only going with um, two runners here, Daryl, 008 and, and Lucy in the sky. Lucy in the sky being in the, I think she's in the red in the market. Yeah, she's in the red. You know what? She's in such good form. You open the book. She's run crackers against in open company. Now she's back her, against her own sex off the same mark. There's no reason not to like her. She, you know what? I've, I've never given this pretty as much credit as she deserves. She's actually surprised me somewhat. She's done extremely well. So I respect her chances. I just like the look of number one of you at 008. Just go back to, you know, form line. She's, she's run against Paul Grants and she's run against Bahika. Chimichurri run. She's really taken on the best. Now, in her last start, that was an average merit rating of a 90. She now plummets to an average merit rating of a 71 and she gets the four kilograms off her back. At her best, she's going to get Lucy in the sky a run for her money. I think those two will suffice in the fifth leg of the pick six. Okay, interesting. Uh, she's a seven-year-old mare, but uh, again, uh, you know, she's taking her chances. You've made reference already to the fact that she's run with some decent horses. Darren, um, again, uh, looking at the race, has it come down just to those two, or is Lucy in the Sky hard to beat? Uh, Lucy in the Sky is hard to beat, but double eight. I mean, uh, with her merit trading dropping and four kilos off her back and being uh, running against a lot stronger, um, I think this is the exactter of the day. I would box one and two, double eight, and Lucy in the sky. And I do believe they'll fight her at the finish. Uh, Lucy in the sky, very consistent form. The jockey actually dropped the whip at the 400 last time, and she got touched off by Severescent. So very good run, consistent form. Um, I'm not splitting them one and two in race seven. Okay. I like a bit of this horse, um, number six, Lady Nick. I'll give it a chance. I think with Egan Demela on her... Uh, I'm, I'd like to include her in the play. I mean, her, her form, you might say, is erratic. But if you have a look at the pattern of her form and her rests, the break that she takes, her timing is almost right. And I think that her timing here might just be perfect for her to run a very big race. So uh, that, that is number six on the card. And if, if uh, you can, include it in your exactors and your swingers and trifectas. I'll give that a chance. The last race on the card is the uh, handicap at the 66 level. Uh, the next uh, meeting um, being at Turf and Team will be next Sunday on the 22nd. Um, there are quite a lot of horses to load up here, Darren, if we have a look at the race. So it does appear to be one of those where I suppose you can go with, um, you, uh, choose whatever you fancy. The, 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 the five was Florida Key, Sean Terry, and Lyle Hewitson. I think from a market perspective, they'll, they'll probably dominate here. Yes, Florida Keys, I did fancy her last time out. But everything went her way. It was a vault straight. She tracked the leaders and came with a late burst. But she's drawn 10 out of 12. And it's not easy over the 1,400-meter trip. I think he's got no option but to tuck her in off the pace and instead of racing wide. Um, she is a runner, but dark, dark travel. Uh, two and a half kilos better off for 2.75 length beating last time out. And over the 1400 turpentine, she ran a cracker behind Mama Quera a couple of runs back from a 11 out of 12 draw. She was flying up late. And then the two uh, others in the race are, are fancy. Informative, um, he seems to find um, his best form of late. And of his current rating, he should be competitive. And then after hours, who I actually labeled as, as a good thing last time out, but when I saw him go to start, he wasn't moving well. And during the race as well, it actually looked like Moziani was going to ease him out of the race at the 400. And then he started to pick it up late. So you can't ignore him. Okay, interesting. But open, it, is, it does appear to be a difficult race. Daryl, um, is, is there any value in here? Double figures that you like, maybe? For quartets? Um, Clive, possibly number nine, the Cambo. Uh, we've seen that he's a very capable front runner in, in uh, the Cape. 
I don't know how fit he is coming, uh, having his first run for his new yard. You know, some, uh, a change is as good, good as a holiday. And if he gets up front with 55 kilograms to shoulder, he might, he might prove hard to peg back. So he could be an upset, he could be upset material in the race. But I think uh, Florida Keys, you know, they've changed tactics with her in the last two starts. So I don't believe that draw will prove a problem at all. I actually think it's in her favor because they're going to adopt similar tactics. Just last time she won with a ton in the hand. I mean, Lyle just followed them through and he basically just put her in a gap with 150 to go and, and she was quickened away and she won very, very comfortably. I think with only three pound penalty, I think that's very lenient and I've got very healthy respect for her. I think now that they've found out how to ride her, we're finally starting to see the best of her. And then one Darren never touched on that we've also included is number one, Top Wesselton. Now, many are going to say, wow, top weight, poor form line. But you know what? Last time out, he actually was very um, gutsy and he wanted to win that race. He, he, he was determined. He came back at the finish. Whereas, whereas in his penultimate start, he folded, he threw in the towel and he just folded with 50 to go. So maybe Paul Peters found the problem or something. You know, you've got a poor piece of horse well drawn with a top jockey he's going to be put in the right position and this isn't the best of field so there's no reason why not to include his chances over here i think florida keys probably um want to be with but you know it's an open race and uh, we've thrown in quite a few to to hopefully catch the pick six come sunday okay so not an easy card um maybe we can get money a little bit earlier in the day uh, darren help us with that uh, yeah, the best bet on the card, Castle Town. Um, he should start five to ten, four to ten in the betting. Um, he ran a cracker beyond Waterbury Lane. First run out of the maidens after his debut performance. And I think he's got a bright future. I expect him to win and win well. Uh, value bet, senescence. I think from a one draw, 1,800 meters in that sort of field, she'll take some beating. Okay, interesting. So both of those, seven to one that win double if you want, and two to one the place double, Castletown the win into senescence of place. Um, but Castletown quite confident that uh, we'll get off a mark there. Um, Daryl, you, you've made it a hard call. Yeah, Clark, you know what? I've actually thought of something. I'm, I'm going to rubber, rubber stamp senescence of, yeah. You know, sometimes I am stubborn. I have to be honest. I'm stubborn and I might just have to hang my head in shame if, if she does come unstuck on Sunday and say, you know what, Lyle, let's wait for the rain. But I just think that th this race could be hers for the taking. So if my double arrives on Saturday, I'd recommend to my followers, have a little bit of a dip on senescence. So you saying senescence, we must have a go senescence, you like her, eh? So I'm just, put, can I put her in now? I'm, I'm typing her up. Can I type her up? I, Go for it. Let's let's get the green light. Okay. <laughs> she's, going in, she's going into the play. So the open card, I'm taking it away now. Eh? No more. It's not as open as we made it. You made it out to be. What, what is his best bet? I like the, I like the fact that Darren likes her as well. So it's given me more confidence. Beautiful. All right. Well, there we go. There's confirmation. Done. It's in writing. <laughs> there we got it in writing. Thank you for that, Darren. Um, Last. Lyle's having a good laugh at home. Well, yeah, going to be waiting for the rain. <laughs> be waiting for the rain. Okay, the, the, <laughs> just in, in terms of uh, what I've had a look at, Castletown, I agree. I think, uh, I, yeah, I was dreaming. Uh, uh, Stuart Pettigrew will say it's, it's a nightmare, but I had a dream of Stuart Pettigrew. You won't believe it. Kept uh, in my dream for five minutes. I don't know how long the dream lasts, but there was Stuart Pettigrew coming and going. Coming. I said, you know what? Yeah, this is a sign. I'm going with the Stuart Pettigrew double. Castletown into Lady Nicker. That's my play. I don't, I don't know if Lady Nikki can win it, but I said the place double, let the horse run a place. We get 33 at 10, 7 or 2, maybe, maybe the street. Well, you know what, Clyde? If you just look at her course and distance form, I, I, I think I don't actually have my book with me, but I do believe she's unbeaten over this course and distance. So she obviously, she obviously maybe reserves her best for this turpentine stands on track. Okay, well, let's hope it stays a dream and not a nightmare. All right. Well, that's the that's from us. I'm happy to run through for you, Clyde. How's that? Well, that's that'll be lovely. Thank you very much. 
I appreciate it. Remember <laughs> to join us, boys, uh, ladies and gents. Don't forget every Friday night. We appreciate, uh, as always, your uh, valuable uh, support and that um, that you end up in the winner's queue. The weekend, Darren, you're going, uh, you're going on holiday. What's happening with you? Yeah, I'm going away for six days. Um, it hasn't been a great week punting, so I need a bit of a timeout. Uh, last week, Saturday, was it? Turf and Tan? Yeah. Uh, we missed a pick six in the last leg with six runners out of ten. So hopefully yeah. this weekend we can catch both uh, Kenilworth and Turpentine. Story of our lives. It's always at one leg. We shouldn't leave out one or two horses. I mean, but at the end of the day, we want to try and you know you, you want to do it conservatively. And well, Darryl, we, we could have we could have narrowed it down with um, with William Robertson and uh, the Fortune Runner. We could have gone the two horses there in the field at the back, but it's easy afterwards. Absolutely easy afterwards. You see, uh, these these are the things you know. When you look in the book in the old days, your computer form had the photo form. Remember the photo form, Daryl in the middle. You yeah, the photo. That's right. That was history. So all you know, Darren's talking about this. That's all in the past now. There's nothing we, we can't change it now. It's too late, Darren. It's finished. We look forward to to the weekend to make money. That's the, uh, that's how we're gonna go on, I, I guess. And Daryl, you're all good, eh? This weekend. Well, well, the let, let me just put it this way. If my double arrives, it will cer I'll certainly warm up. I mean, this weather's freezing. Uh, we've just uh, probably one of the coldest winters I've ever experienced in my life. Oh, no, tell me about it. All right. Well, anyway, it's okay. Let's get the cash hopefully this weekend. Thank you very much for your time, guys, and to everybody else. Uh, we'll have, I think we're going to have a special guest next, next weekend. I don't want to announce it just yet. I want to confirm it. The sales coming up, so um, it's the uh, national two-year-old sales coming up as well. So it may be a bit difficult to get somebody on the Friday night. We'll work it out. If we if we don't, we don't. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll bring it maybe the following week. But thanks, guys, and thanks for your time. And we'll see you again. Thanks, soon. guys. Cheers. Cheers.